What is up, harvesters? Welcome back to my subscribers. And if you're new here, welcome to Hobby Harvest. My name is Ken. So today I want to talk to you guys about turning your micro parcel into a deer vacuum. And I actually have a ton of experience doing this because this is exactly what my southeastern Wisconsin property is. It is just about an acre that I have under control that's on the back of a larger property. But I'm only able to really improve that back acre for wildlife habitat. Even though this video is going to be very focused on micro parcels, this stuff does apply if you do have a larger property as you're going to just want to make sure you're doing these small things in different areas on your, on your larger property. So, all right, let's get started. So the number one thing you're going to want to do on a micro parcel is simply give the deer what they do not have in the area. And so on some properties, that's going to mean food. And that's what I'm going to focus on a lot in this video, because that's what my parcel is set up to do is to have a food plot. But if you are in like big egg, open, open country where there is like no cover whatsoever, you may in that scenario want to consider just providing a ton of cover on that small micro parcel and hoping that they just choose your area as a bedding area and then you can hunt them that way as well. But that's pretty simple. Just get as much thick cover as close to the ground as you can if you're trying to create bedding on that small parcel. And then you're gonna typically wanna hunt that in the mornings because they will have gone off at night and they'll be returning to that once it gets light out and you're just waiting for them to return. And then that's pretty easy how you would hunt that. Of course, set up different stands if you need to to be able to hunt different winds. But what if we're gonna set this up as a food plot, which means that this is gonna be a PM hunting location. So. We will typically hunt bedding areas in the morning. We're going to hunt food locations in the afternoon. So that is sort of something you are going to have to deal with having a micro parcel. You're not going to have a morning and an afternoon opportunity on that property typically. Now, by all means, if you have deer showing up in the morning on a food plot consistently and your cameras are showing that, go hunt in the morning. But again, typically I would only be hunting a food plot in the afternoon. I'd be hunting bedding areas in the morning. So anyway, we're gonna set up a food plot on this micro parcel. And because we are so worried about getting deer there before dark, keeping them and holding them there for as long as possible before dark, what we wanna do is consider the shape in which that we are going to create the food plot. So I know you see a ton of pictures online if you guys are getting into this or have been into this for a while. But you'll see a ton of pictures or videos that guys put out and their food plots are like these big like two acre open fields that almost look like an agricultural field. Well, we can't do that on a micro parcel. Those types of food plots are really good if you have a huge deer herd that you're just trying to give a ton of food to and not have them browse you down to nothing if your deer herd's just like huge. Now, when we're talking about micro parcels, we have to worry about somebody else providing the big food source for them because we just don't have enough land to do it. So what we're going to want to do, though, is create a food plot in the shape of something that can like compartmentalize deer on it. And so the reason for that is when you have those big open food plots, the deer can kind of take their own space on them and like spread out. Deer don't like being near each other when they're not from the same family group. So they will spread out or they will just avoid an area with deer on it. So if you put just like a little oval or circle or a little square food plot in on a micro parcel and you get that first doe family group to come in there right before dark, the other deer might not come in there or they might come in there and kind of like try to push each other off. You know, you guys have seen them. They kind of, Some people say they look like they're playing, but they're not playing. They're actually kind of being aggressive with each other. They don't just actually like attack each other though. You know, they're trying to get through the entire year without injury. So they're going to be, they're going to take it pretty easily without, you know, doing any real damage to each other. But they're definitely putting that like pressure on each other, that like social pressure to like kick the other group off. Like this is my area. But how we can avoid that is all we have to do is shape the food plot in a way that isn't a big open area. And so what we can do, what I love to do is shape my food plots in like a boomerang shape or like an L shape. So you can hypothetically have a deer group over here and a deer group over here, and they can't even see each other because the food plot like bends out. And so in doing this, we're able to actually get more deer to this food plot before dark, which is when you want them there because that's when you can hunt them. And so 
you're going to be able to get more deer there because they're not going to put as much pressure on each other. They're able to take their own little corner because you didn't just make it this big open area. They're also going to feel a lot safer and more secure to come onto that sort of like compartmentalized food plot before it gets dark out. So some of those big food plots, the problems that you might have with those is that your deer aren't coming onto them until like after dark, or maybe your mature bucks aren't coming onto them until like after dark, because they just don't feel safe being out in that like big open area. Now, of course, if your like natural habitat is big and open, those deer are more accustomed to being in those open areas. If you're in more thicker cover, like natural thick cover, be it swamp land, be it like big woods up north, be it any anything where there is like trees and stuff like natural things that are cutting down your sight line so that you can't actually see that far off into the distance those deer are not going to feel comfortable if you put them on something where they can see far off into the distance and so they just won't come to it actually it's not that you'll even be able to get them there they'll come there after dark of course they go a lot of places after dark uh, for example my dad has fruit trees in his front yard right next to the road and the deer eat those fruit trees all night long but you will never see a deer on those fruit trees during daylight hours because they're too o it's too open it's all a mowed lawn with fruit trees but they are there every single night so just an example of like don't worry about what they do at night you need to worry about what they're doing during daylight hours and we need to create what they want for daylight hours because that's of course when we can hunt them so all right we talked about let's put this food plot in the shape of like a boomerang and now what I like to do is shape the edges of where that boomerang heads off towards where you think they're going to have cover. Now on a micro parcel, that's most likely going to be on your neighbor's property. So you are going to be reliant on that. We aren't really going to be able to put both food and bedding on a micro parcel. So we're going to have to rely on our neighbors to provide the other half of that but kind of focus or aim the ends of that boomerang towards where you think they're coming from, from those bedding areas, because it's just going to kind of form their movement then. And what we want to do is actually make that right at the tip of that boomerang is that when they come around the edge, especially those bucks, because they're going to want to make sure they can check out on both sides of that boomerang to see if there's any does or other bucks or whatever. And that, of course, a great stand location. So when we do this though, we wanna make sure that it's already kind of like influencing their line of travel from like one bedding area or from the other one on in, and then wherever they go from that after dark, we don't care. But you're going to have a really great shot at putting those mature bucks right in front of you by doing this. So, all right, now that we've considered that, I wanna jump into the next thing. And so we need to make sure that they feel safe and secure coming to these food plots before it gets dark out and how we do that is like I said we already want to shape the food plot in a certain way but we need to make sure that the edges of that food plot are screened very well and I like to do that in two or say three ways the first is my first layer of cover right off the immediate edge of that food plot is switchgrass and so a lot of guys talk about switchgrass but I absolutely love it just as that like first layer Plus, it'll grow a lot faster. You can get it established a lot faster than you're going to be able to get the other layers that I'm going to talk about here shortly established. But it, even if it does take you two, three years, because it does take two to three years to get switchgrass established to those nice mature stands that I'm sure you guys have seen in other videos on YouTube here. But once we get that first layer of switchgrass established, it's really good. It really holds that edge of that food plot because deer love edge. They, they are always like on the edge of things. You ever notice, like even if you look out in an egg field when you're driving down the highway right before dark, they're always on the edge of the field. They're not like standing out in the middle of the field. So we can form those nice edges of that food plot, but they're with the switchgrass, it's not like this big hard line. It's that nice soft, like feathered or transitional edge into the rest of the natural habitat around there. So we want to get that switchgrass established first. I'll, I'll go as low as like a 10 foot wide area because we're on a micro parcel we don't have a whole lot of land to play with so we don't want to be putting in like these 15 yard wide switchgrass stands that a lot of guys will do if they have a lot bigger parcels but yeah you're looking to do like 10 15 20 feet wide if you can really make it work 
The wider, the better, of course, but obviously space is at a premium when we're talking about these small properties. So what we want to do is get that switchgrass line around the whole perimeter of the food plot established first. Then we're going to talk about that next layer. So that second layer, I love using things like red osier dogwood where I'm at, but anything that is like a red osier dogwood, like up north, like tag alder, or anything that has a lot of branches close to the ground and gets really thick and gnarly and also is a decent browse for the deer. So pretty much any thick brush that when you're walking through and it's kind of hard for you to walk through it, that's exactly what you want planted in that next layer around your food plot. And then in that third layer, we can put stuff like trees. So like box elders are great, especially when they're young, but then they'll grow up even taller and then they'll kind of give you that third layer these are also great things for browse so like right now it's february i actually just got off of my southeastern wisconsin food plot right now i was checking out all the sign out there i was checking the cameras see where the bucks are at with if they've shed their antlers or not yet and the edge of that food plot is just nipped and browsed all of those red osier dogwood have the tips of them nipped off by the deer and then also in the food plot itself, the brassicas that I planted, they're starting to like dig those up and go after those still now in February. So it's great to see that that food plot is still helping that deer herd through the winter. And we're supposed to be getting some really warm weather here for Wisconsin in February. It's supposed to be in the 30s and 40s here coming up. So ideally these deer have weathered the worst part of winter and hopefully we've carried as many fawns into the spring and as many future fawns that those does are currently pregnant with into the spring as well so ideally we'll have a nice herd next year so and that's just something to show that these food plots help with that as well not just in attracting the deer to you so that you can hunt them during the hunting season they actually get your herd through the winter a lot better and then give you a better herd to hunt next season too so all right, we got that that screening set up. And now when I talk about screening, I mean, you do not want to be able to see through this any time of year. Even in winter, there should be so many sticks and switchgrass and whatever in your way that you cannot see off of the food plot while you're standing on it. Now, this is going to be rather hard to get established right away, depending on what you're working with naturally. This could take a few years to get established. But also keep in mind to like, kind of like lower yourself down. You know, deer aren't up here looking off into the distance that like six feet off the ground they're like at about our belly height you know they're only about three to four feet off the ground so you know look down at that level and see what you can see and see if that is really cutting down on all those sight lines because that's what you're really going for you don't actually need that like six foot tall screen unless you have like higher topography off away from you or whatever in those situations you might want to consider putting in like a couple of like white pines or any pine because it's going to grow really fast and it, it'll cut down on those sight lines for you as well. Now, I typically don't like pines for anything other than cutting down sight lines because they don't provide browse for the deer and the deer really don't bed by them either because they don't have browse. So unless it's like a really bad storm or something, they're trying to get out of the weather. But for the most part, the deer do not like hanging out in pines. So like even when you're like in somewhere where you have a lot of those like telephone pole, like white pine forests or whatever, they're like completely void of wildlife because wildlife just don't like being in just a solid pine forest. So anyway, we got we got these sight lines taken care of. So I want to get into the next thing that's going to be applicable to those sight lines as well. And that is your hunter access. Now. First of all, on a micro parcel, just because it's a micro parcel doesn't mean you can't have multiple stand locations on it. I would recommend putting in more than one or even three or whatever on it in order to hunt different wins for that particular parcel. But because it's a micro parcel and because this is maybe your only place to hunt or your only place to hunt in the area, you want to make sure that these hunter accesses are perfect. They're perfectly screened and you're only hunting these micro parcels when the wind is ideal for where one of these stand locations is set up. Because if you blow it out and you spook your deer off of it, you're screwed. You don't have anywhere else to go. So you really got have to be very careful with these micro parcels when you're hunting them just to make sure you're taking the most care. I really just watch the weather. I hunt the best weather days. I'll hunt the back of a big weather change. So if we have a big storm come through or just a huge temperature drop or whatever, I'll hunt that next day. And then I might not hunt it for a week or two or whatever, depending on what's going on, depending on how the weather is. And of course, you know, what time of year are we in? Is it the rut or not? 
but I'll really let that property just soak if I don't think the weather is a good weather day to hunt that property because I don't want to blow it out and ruin it for when it is a good weather day. So just learn how to do that to typically just any big change in the weather, hunt the backside of it. So a storm comes through, hunt right after it because that storm is going to put those deer in their bedding areas and they're not really going to come out and feed and do their normal walk around like they do every night. So they're going to be hungry. They're going to want to come hit that food source as soon as that storm's done. And then same thing with a big temperature drop. You know, temperature drops, they get that chill in them and they're going to need to go put on some calories to help get them through that colder drop. And this doesn't matter if it drops from like 80 to 60 degrees or if it drops from like 20 degrees to zero degrees. They can feel that change in temperature just like you or I can. You know, we can go outside once you know, us Wisconsinites and everybody up north here, you know, when it's like 20 degrees outside in the winter after it's now February and we've been dealing with it for a while, we go outside and a 20 degree day does not feel that cold. But if it drops down to like zero degrees or like negative 10 degrees, we're going to go outside and be like, oh, okay, it's a little, still a little cold out here. So that ch it's that change in temperature that you feel that you're not accustomed to. That's what gets them. They feel that too. They feel like, hey, I need to go throw some calories on to keep warm. Got to keep that boiler going. Got to keep myself warm. And that's when you're going to have a good shot on them as well. So, you know, keep all of these things in mind when you have these micro parcels. We really do not want to mess them up once we put all of this work into them because this stuff really is going to work. So, all right, I just want to cover three more quick things you want to consider when you're doing a micro parcel like this. And so this is going to sort of depend on how you shaped that food plot in the first place. But I would highly recommend putting like travel corridors or man-made deer trails that go off of those edges of that boomerang towards wherever the cover is, towards wherever you think they're going to be bedding down on your neighbor's property just to kind of better influence them coming into that food plot where you want them to come into the food plot. You, of course, aren't going to want them to be like coming in behind you. So if you could like plant a very thick screen where your stand is, they're not going to want to walk through that. So they're going to have to come around it and then they'll come in on those travel corridors that you gave that you like. If you created that super thick cover around this whole food plot, you can exactly pick where they come in by opening those areas up a little bit and then hey if you do talk to your neighbors and you have a good relationship with your neighbors maybe they do let you go trim a little bit onto their land or whatever and kind of make those man-made deer trails go off into their property a little bit more towards those bedding areas anything you can do to influence them you know some people have good relationships with their neighbors some people don't and that's just you're gonna have to work on those and work with your neighbors on that as well the other thing is mock scrapes. Now, I love mock scrapes. I have mock scrapes at all my stand locations. But is it worth it to put a mock scrape on a food plot? Well, I conducted this experiment over the last year, I believe. I didn't really have a nice tree to put it in, so I actually just have it hanging off of like a 2x4 that I mounted on a pole. And I wanted to see how that would do. And so it has not done as well as like my other mock scrapes that I put in the woods where those things are just like a vacuum for the deer to come to from all directions, it seems. Like they have to hit that up before they can move through the area. But it's also, I think, because it's on the food plot, where the food plot is more of an attraction to them than the mock scrape is. But I still do get deer every once in a while come up, just kind of bump their nose on it. I will have bucks that'll come up and like scrape in it more during the rut than the rest of the year. But I put it exactly in the middle of when I told you guys that I had that boomerang like this. I put it right in the middle. So it was just a little bit of an extra distraction or something to slow the deer down when they were coming through that boomerang, which of course is right in the middle where my stand location is at. So it was just a little bit of extra something to get a shot on them. Now, knowing what I know now, I don't know that I'm going to move it. I'll probably leave it there. They don't seem to be scared of it or anything. So... I'll leave it there, but what I would consider doing is putting mock scrapes at the ends or the entrances of your food plots. Like I said, if you're going to make those man-made deer trails that come into your food plots, I might consider putting a mock scrape there just to like influence that they do come in and out of those areas a little bit more. And then the other thing is, is you can always put stand locations at those like ends of the food plot buy those mock scrapes also put one like in the middle and then now you can hunt depending on what your wind is for that entire food plot and yeah I mean it might be overkill to put three mock scrapes on one food plot 
but if this is all you're working with is just a micro parcel it's definitely worth it to just give them that little bit of extra distraction when you're there hunting them especially if you're going to be hunting this stand exclusively and you aren't going to just let this sit for like two months while you go hunt another stand somewhere else like guys can when they have a larger property so and then the last thing I want to talk about is water holes. Now, I do not have a water hole on my micro parcel because it is surrounded on two sides by a creek. So there's water in the area. I haven't felt like I needed to put a water hole in. Some guys have told me they had the same situation and they did put a water hole in and it has worked for them. So, you know, let me know down in the comments if you guys have put a water hole in next to water let me know how it works for you. Maybe I will take the effort and put one in, but you know, let me know down in the comments. I'll, I'll consider that for an improvement for next year, but that's just the last thing is you could put a water hole in, especially if you don't have any water in the area. I would put that baby like maybe right in front of your stand, be that on one of the ends of the food plot or right in the middle of the food plot itself. Water, when there is no water in the area, like I said at the beginning of the video, you want to give them what they don't have. So if they don't have water and you give them water, that is going to be a huge attraction and you're definitely going to want to put that on your property if you're able. So, all right, I hope you guys got some value out of this. If you did, go ahead, hit that like button, leave me a comment below, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and I'll catch you on the next one.